In this video, we just part 18 of how to create our custom candlestick chart. In chart, yes, we're going to work on creating this zoom box here, or at least the starting point. So in the previous video, we already have a starting point here, but now we can start to create the dragging box. And what we want to do eventually is when we select this, it should zoom. But of course, we're not done with that yet. But we're going to first work on this zoom box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue on where we left off in the previous video where you can see here when I drag or click it will understand the starting point and what I want to do of course is have now not only the first one but also the dragging effect so we have two values so we can eventually create our what we can call a zoom box the box that we want to zoom in on so let's scroll down here let's go back here where we were and let's start off here. So we have this drag start here. And the next thing what I want to do here is to create a object destructuring. So it's a constant. And again, if you want to understand what is an object destructuring, check out in the description box my video, understanding chart.js object destructuring. And so yes, equal chart. And then what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to uh, put in here i guess ctx we can put in data we can put in here the chart area and then we can say here top bottom left right width and height next we can say here the scales x and y most likely we will not use all of them but having them just prepared can be useful for us and then we can always remove whatever we don't need so then we have this and then what I want to do now is to uh, look because basically what I want to do here is I want to make sure when we drag starting drag and then we need to have the uh, dragging or continue on dragging or basically the drag movement. So what I'm going to say here if statement and this if statement is necessary because I want to make sure I'm dragging within this area and I'm not really dragging I'm basically uh, holding and then move my mouse from left or right so but it must be within this area not somewhere outside or here or anywhere else so we have to force that in there so what we can say here and I'm uh, going to put in here a simple option going to say if and then what I'm going to say here drag dot offset X which is this one here we want to make sure that the offset X is within our range and we're going to say here if this will be smaller or equal to left and then we're going to say and we're going to say here the drag dot offset x should be um, uh, sorry I'm saying here smaller or equal it should be larger and equal to left and smaller or equal to right so once we have that we have like this and then if this is the case, what I want to do here is I'm going to say a canvas and I realize that I should have a canvas here, put in a canvas comma, and basically canvas is just with reference to the chart itself, the chart canvas element. And then I'm going to say dot on mouse move. I want to have here a event callback. So put in here callback or an arrow function expression, then curly braces. And then I'm going to say here, drag move as our event uh, or as a function and then we register this event here so the reason for this is basically now if we are within this box we are allowed to track the next movement so for that i'm going to put in here i'm going to say here a function drag move i'm going to grab here this item i will say this can be called our uh, drag move or maybe the drag delta and the reason why I'm using delta is basically delta stands in mathematics for difference so basically we have here the starting point the drag start and this will be then the drag difference so then I'm going to say your console log and I'm going to show you now a very neat variable that we can grab here oh uh, all right so that works again I don't know what happened uh, we're going to say here this dot offset x save this refresh now if I click and then I move look at that 
it recognizes the movement. If I go left or right, it goes up or down in value. The closer to the left, the closer to the zero. And the closer to the right, the higher. So you can see here we get all of this variable information or information that we need. So now we have this. So what I want to do here is eventually you want to say here with this movement or before I even continue on, I need to get the following because I want to work with the dates. And later on, once I have these pixel variables, they need to be connected to whatever date we are on. How do we get the date here? Because I want to grab a date array. To do this, I need to go back here to our data here. And remember, we have this item here, or specifically the x variable. This x variable will be very, very important. So that will mean from going data dot data sets index zero dot data index zero and then dot x. Basically, the very first value I want to grab, or we don't even have to grab the first value. I need to make a loop in that or an array. So I can just say dot data and I'm going to do a map array functionality. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say a constant dates array. I'm going to create my new array that is based on the X variables above that I just showed you. But then I want to loop through every one of them. So they're all together. So for that, I'm going to use the map array method. The map array method creates an automatic new array with this constant variable that we define here in advance. So this is very useful for us. So I'm going to say here, all we need to do is remember here the data. So we can say here data dot data sets index zero dot data. And then we're going to say here dot map. And this is the map array. And what I'm going to do here, when we have this, I'm going to say here, the map array, this needs to be a shorthand, basically shorthand for this. So I'm going to say just date comma index as well i'm going to put it in the index but i don't believe we will need that but just in case and then what i want to do is a function error expression because it's a callback functionality and here i'm going to say return what exactly date dot x so now i'm going to say here console log i'm going to grab here we have here the date dot x and if i Oh, sorry, we don't even have to put the data that x in there, but I need to grab here the array variable. If I save this, refresh, and now if I drag, look at that. We get the array variable that we have in the x and as we drag. So you can see here it loops through this many times, but of course, because of the console log. However, this confirms now that what we have is correct. So that's the first part that we need. The next part is we want to draw as well the item. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, well, what we can do is very simple. I'm going to just make a very, very basic item. I'm going to say ctx.save. And the reason why is I want to save all variables above, basically from this here. Uh, or we were borrowing basically this item that moves all within these functions here, since we have many functions within each other. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say ctx.rectangle. Or we can say here fill rectangle and this will consist of the variable the starting x starting y and then the width of the x and then the height of the y so for the height we can start very easily or top and bottom so we're going to say top here for that and then the bottom or basically the height would be just this height here so we can grab that one the width is a bit more tricky and the x is also tricky well basically we can get this here to put that in there and then afterwards we probably have to put in here the drag delta but i might later on have to calculate to deduct the difference so this is very important if i save this right now refresh if i do something all right as you can see here what is happening it works but it calculates because of the variables here it just calculates those differences so what i need to do here this drag delta should be deducted by our starting point of the drag x so we're going to put that in there save that refresh now if i drag here we are if i go other side here we are but of course this still looks a bit hideous because it's quite hard to see here don't worry about that we're going to work on that 
So basically what we can do here, I guess we can just do that here for above. I'm going to say here chart dot update. Then we're going to say here none. I'm going to make sure that this is uh, intelligent enough. All right, refresh. And now if I go there and there, all right, that's step one. So the next thing what I want to do is before I wrap it up here, because we're not done yet, but there will be another video, of course, regarding to this. I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in here a stroke style. Stroke rep, basically. And what I want to do is here, I want to give it a color. I'm going to give this a simple color. If I go to my uh, website, chartjs3.com, getting started, which you can find in the description box, I'm going to grab here a default blue color, which is the second variable here. This is just perfect for us to use because we have also the moving average and the boiling up band as well. So this is already that color and then we have this on top of it. We don't want that all together. So, or at least we don't want the same colors. Sorry, that's, that's what I should say. So what I want to say here, uh, stroke style equals this, but this will be a solid color. Then we have another one is CTX dot stroke, uh, not stroke, but fill style equals oh let's remove all the string values and put it like that save that refresh now we have this here you might notice it doesn't disappear yet and it will also not uh it will suddenly disappear because of the tooltip here for that i will skip that i will not focus on that i have a whole video series for that by the way if you want then you have to uh, dive deeper into my coin market cap chart which covers this item because we need to make a custom chart for a custom tooltip for that. So for that one, I will just ignore that. But we have this here. So we have this one here that works. And if I go here and there, this works nicely. But if I push it here, look what happened. We have still some issues here. So we're going to work on that in the next video. We're going to solve that one. And then we want to start working on the zoom that it should trigger properly. 